Hey everyone. So today's project is going to be making a vase that is designed for ikebana. Ikebana is a Japanese art of flower arrangements and typically the vases have these pin frogs in here where the stems of the flower are going to be inserted and coming out in a arrangement. This particular example that I have is from a potter named Sandra Dolph, who lives in the BC region. So a lot of her forms and surface kind of reflect nature. So I liked how this piece was a great example of a hand building project that we can do at home. I will say for folks who watch these demos, this one is a little bit more intermediate level. So I'm gonna be jumping through some of the steps in kind of a classic cooking demo format where I'll show you the thing and then kind of fast forward it. So if you're looking for like a one time first touching clay project, I would work up to this video. This is a little bit more helpful to have some knowledge under your belt. I wanted to do something a little bit more unique today. So what we need are a rolling pin, a silicone rib tool, You'll want a needle tool, some sort of knife or scallop or exacto knife, a slip, clay, and a piece of dishware that can be acting as your mold. I recommend one that doesn't have too deep of a concave shape in here. If you have to press it in too dramatically, it might stress out the clay and you're more likely to have cracking. So it can be all kinds of different shapes. You can use a ceramics piece, metal, plastic, pretty much any material, um, but just make sure it's not too dramatic. And you'll want either cornstarch or, in my case, I don't have cornstarch, so I'm gonna use a little piece of saran wrap so that that clay doesn't fuse right onto this mold that I'm going to be using and just never let go. So either cornstarch or plastic. So the first step that you're going to do is roll out your slabs with a rolling pin. You're going to make two and you want them to go in multiple directions so that you're compressing the clay out. Depending on your molds form, you might wanna make them more rounded, like circular or rectangular if you're working with like a long shape. Make sure as you're rolling it out, you're gonna be flipping it every few compressions. So we're gonna to want to be working with leather hard slabs, either a little bit firmer. So ideally, you're going to roll out your two slabs, set one aside to dry flat, and the other we're gonna put into our mold. So to show you all, this is about the thickness that I want rolling. Then I'm gonna go over it and compress it with my rib tool. This is going to stretch the clay just a little bit thinner. So whenever you're working with slabs, you're going to roll it out just a hair thicker than you actually want the piece to be because your rib is going to compress it to that exact zone. When I'm compressing, I'm using a 45 degree angle and doing a long stroke. When I've taught kids classes, the analogy that I use is it's almost like you're petting a cat. You wanna do decently firm strokes so the cat isn't confused what's going on and it isn't like thinking you're a toy, um, but not so aggressive to where the cat will want to bite you. So long and firm strokes are better than short ones and make sure you go in multiple directions so that the clay gets compressed in not just one way so that it doesn't want to dry that way. So one of your slabs is going to be let out and stay flat. The other one we're going to press into here and in my case I'm going to use the mold and my saran wrap and just place the saran wrap down in there. Depending on how big my slab is I might want to cut it down um, before I try to drape it in there, but this one's pretty small. 
So I'm just going to peel that up, place it in. I'm going to start from the center and pat out to where the clay is going to meet the walls. Once I have that placed in there and it's really kind of smoothed up to that, then I can go with my knife and I can slice off all that extra clay. I'm going to want to set this and the flat slab aside and probably wait a half day until it's ready. If I'm going to do this the next day, just make sure that I'm going to wrap it up with plastic overnight so it doesn't dry to be bone dry overnight. It's going to kind of depend on the heat in your house and the environment in your house. So I'm going to have this one hanging out setting up and then my other one that I in theory rolled out. So setting this aside, time has elapsed and I have my flat slab here. It is at the point where it's leather hard. So when I hang it up, it's not going to change its form at all. And it's not going to hold any of my fingerprint marks. My slab in my mold is just setting up firm and I'm just going to leave the plastic on there for now. Depending on how you want your form to be, you can either use another um, sort of circular object in your house or make your own template in whatever form that you would like. Just make sure that it is a little bit bigger than the slab inside your mold. So for example, in Sandra's piece here, it kind of hangs off of the edge so that it's going to sit on there and be secure. So my template is going to go onto my flat slab. As best as possible, I'm going to use my scalpel to cut along the edge of that template. I don't have to be perfect because I'm going to be smoothing some of that out later. As you have extra parts that you put off, I just like to peel them and get them out of the way. Now that I have my circular form, I'm going to slip and score. So I'm going to use the form on my mold and on that edge, I'm going to take my needle tool and make my grooves. And line up my form and see kind of if it's right on the line or this one's going to have a ledge on it. So I'm going to go a little bit in with my slipping grooves. So it's kind of at the um, half an inch to a quarter of an inch mark. I'm just going to make grooves, add my slip in. And this is why you need it to be firm is that if you're working with soft clay and you try to attach this, gravity is just gonna slump that piece that's gonna go on top and just make it concave in. So you do need the clay to be on the firm side and you don't wanna add too much slip because it's gonna make it super gooey and then again, kind of compromise that structure. I usually like to just kind of go over some of my lines, reset them. 
And now, as best as possible, I'm going to put that on there and line it up to where it's gonna imprint. So I'm just putting light pressure down, trying to be really mindful of not putting so much pressure to where it is going to want to slump the inside. I typically would let this sit for 20 minutes if I was making this without it being a demo video and then kind of come back to it and add my hole. But for now, I have my flat sheet on top and I'm going to add my hole. So I want this one to be kind of bean shaped and you need to have a large enough hole that's going to fit that pin frog in there. So I'm just outlining it and then coming back with my scalpel being very gentle when I'm making this cut. And you can use an X-Acto knife too. I just have a scalpel on hand. It's usually cheaper to get like a pack of them and they stay nice and sharp. When you're cutting this, just make sure that you don't drop it right into your piece. So you might have to kind of peel it up. And then I have my hole and I can kind of press this up a little bit if it started to sink. Something you could do is prop like a little sponge in there or paper towels just to make sure as it's drying, it's not gonna sink in there. I'm then gonna go over once it's set up, just with my thumb and smooth out that line. It should be set enough to where you could probably take it out of its um, mold. If it's not coming off easily, just let it set longer. So in this case, I'm going to let it set a little bit, but just kind of peel off my edges. You can kind of grab that saran wrap. And that might help pop it off. Yeah. Okay. So now I can take it out and I can look at that edge. So typically I like to make my attachments a little bit bigger than I want so I can kind of cut it down to size and then smooth it out a little bit more. So then I'm going to come back. Scale it down. It's always easier to take extra clay away than realizing you didn't have enough. So ideally make your template a little bit bigger and then you can always attach it later. So I'm just pressing up against, using my pads of my fingertips, I'm just pressing that edge of the mold to my top form to make sure it's really on there. And once I have that, I can either just kind of come back with a paintbrush and smooth this extra edge, or ideally I would like to add a coil reinforcement to that. So I would just roll out a coil, make sure it's super small, and then once it's firm enough, I can flip this over and add extra clay along here and then smooth it out to where, sorry, I should make that a little 